Hi everyone, welcome back to the Laser Channel. I am Greg and in today's video, I'll be making this fun puzzle project. Stay tuned as I go through the recommended materials list for this project and guide you along with the included light burn files. Welcome back and thank you for joining me today. Before we begin, I do want to mention a few words about safety. If you are following along at home, please follow all the safety directions included with any of materials that you're using and any machinery that you're using. Speaking of safety, there is no better safety than these safety glasses that are most likely included with your machine, along with the aforementioned understanding all of the safety uh, features on your machine. With that covered, let's jump right into the materials that I recommend for this project. The recommended materials list for this project is really short and I'm going to start out with what's starting on the top of this table and that's an aluminum backer plate that's included with most honeycomb kits. This is good insurance to protect your tabletop surface from any smoke residue from laser cutting, along with any stray laser beams from hitting your tabletop surface. These backer plates do have a tendency of moving around sometimes, so I like to keep mine firmly in place by using two pieces of blue painter's tape. And speaking of honeycomb, I will be using honeycomb on this project because I will be doing some cutting. And the honeycomb that I like to use accepts magnets, so I use that to hold my projects in place. And speaking of magnets, I usually keep a handful of these magnetic strips around to box in my project material so that it cannot shift around during the project. And the second to last item that I'll be using, of course, will be a laser machine. And in this particular project, I'm going to be using the SculptFun S30 Pro. The Pro Edition having a 10 watt laser module on it. And I chose the SculptFun S30 series because it does include a full air assist kit. The air assist kit for this machine does include this air pump. This air pump does uh, flow about 30 liters per minute, which is more than adequate for doing any cutouts. The other really neat thing about this machine is that the air pump plugs directly into the machine and through light burn software, I can turn on or off this pump. And we'll learn more about that when we get into light burn. And the very last thing that we need for this project, of course, is a piece of wood. For this, I'm using a piece of Baltic birch plywood that is about a quarter inch thick. If you'd like to know more about any of the materials being used in this video, I'll have product links in the description down below. Next up, let's jump into Lightburn and I'll show you the files that I'll be provided. Links will be in the description down below, of course. I'll also be going on to show you where I found the files that I use to create the light burn files. So next up, join me in light burn. Welcome to light burn. This is the file that I'll be providing for you. And a quick breakdown of this is you'll have an image in this one. I have this little baby lion and then in black, I have all of the puzzle pieces. And as an option, I have this green outline border. Let's take a look at each of the layers here. If I press and hold shift and go on this first layer that's red, that is going to be just the baby lion here and I can move this around. The next layer, if I shift and click on that one, that is going to be all of the puzzle pieces. And I'll put that back. And then of course is this green layer, if I highlight that one, I can pick that one up and move that around. Now this green layer is totally optional. This is up to you if you'd like to use it or not. If you don't, you can simply go to the output and turn that off and it will not cut that out. If I control A, we'll see that the total width is just over six and a half inches and the height is just over eight. You can certainly grab one of these corners and make this larger or smaller depending on your needs and the size of your project material. 
And if you called during the material coverage area of this video, I mentioned that the included air pump with this machine can turn on and off automatically from within the light within the light burn software. And over here, this is where we turn that on and off. So if I click this off, the air will not turn on during this image. In this image, I'm going to be engraving and everything else I will be cutting. And I definitely do want to have the air assist running while I'm doing any cutting operations. In preparation of this video, I did do a number of test engravings and test cuts to make sure that I had proper settings for this type of Baltic birch plywood. And I found I had good results with a speed of 130 millimeters per second at a power level of 80%. And cutting, I found that a speed of four millimeters per second at 80%. Now I've had some people comment on other videos that I made where I was uh, running the laser power at 100% anytime I was doing a cutting and they commented that they've been working around these tabletop laser dialed machines for quite some time and that they had a whole drawer of burned out laser modules from running them at 100%. So let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been. Have you burned up your laser module from running it at 100% or have you been running it at 100% while cutting for years and haven't seen any decline in performance? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what your experience is. Before I move on to where I found all the files to create this light burn file, I just want to double click on this image line here and just show you the settings that I have. I do have over scanning on and I'll show you what that is in just a second. And I do have uh, about 280 lines per inch. Uh, normally I do around 300 plus or minus. That seems to be a good starting point for pretty much any engraving. Now that over scan, I can show you what that looks like. If I go up to this preview button and I zoom in, everything that's in red is what the laser is going to cut or engrave. And we'll see that I've got these red lines that are extending past the project. This is the over scan area. And this is basically, uh, kind of a little buffer zone, if you will, to allow the laser module itself to slow down and stop and then ramp back up to speed as it changes direction. And this just makes things a lot easier and smoother for the laser module. This all looks good. Let's hop onto the internet and I'll show you where I got these files from. Here's the first website that I'd like to show you. It is called Pixabay and it has a ton of free uh, photo images and vector art images to use on projects. And to search out this lion, I just simply typed in lion and made sure that I had selected vector graphics. And this is what the search produced for me. When I scroll down, this is the lion that I found for this project. This vector image has this checkerboard background and this checkerboard background means that when I import this image into a project that it will have no background to it whatsoever. And over here is the free download and right below that is the Pixabay license. If you choose to use these images for anything that you work on or sell, make sure that you do check this license to make sure that you're following it in accordance of how they intend it to be used. It's kind of a mouthful. When you click on free download, you get these different options for that. And then you can click on download and you might have to log in. But I found this is a website that I don't get spammed with all kinds of offers and junk email. The next website that I'd like to show you is free pick. And this is where I found the puzzle template. And for that, I typed in puzzle pieces and searching around on their website here. It does take a little bit sometimes to find what you're looking for, but I was able to find this puzzle template. Now this website, I did have to find, I had to be careful to make sure that I didn't click this download because this is for some other thing. I actually wanted this download and this image 
does need attribution required. So I'm gonna have a link to uh, that attribution in the product description down below. Outside of the computer, back by the machine, I'm going to place this last magnetic strip to hold in my project material on this honeycomb. This is a really neat way that I discovered to hold my material down and it's kind of my go-to method. I have the enclosure around the machine and I do have power on the machine. Inside Lightburn, we can see that I do have now the S30 Pro selected and it is connected and I can hit the home button and the machine will go through its homing routine. And I'm going to navigate over to the move tab and I'm going to use the machine controls to move the laser module over to the project material. And you'll note that each time I hit one of these uh, move buttons, you'll see that there is this little crosshairs that moves. That is the location of the laser module in relation to this work area. But I'm going to look inside of my work bed area and take a look at where the laser module is. And I'll keep moving this over until I'm in that bottom left hand corner. And I think that looks good. Now with all of my project highlighted, I'm going to just drag this over and put it right up to that spot. And now I'm ready to frame the project out and make sure that the laser travels over the work material the entire time it's framing. And I like the way that looks. And before starting any project, I always like to make sure that yes, on this engraving step of just the lion, I have the air turned off. But for these other steps, I do have the air turned on. For this engraving step, I'm only doing one pass, whereas for these cutting steps, I do need to make two passes. And there again, at two passes, and my speed and power levels all look correct. I'm ready to close up the enclosure and turn the exhaust fan on and start this project. I'm ready to hit the start button and this project will take a little bit of time, but I'm going to show you just a couple segments during the engraving. Before I move the parts out of the workstation area, I like to just wiggle them a little bit to make sure that all these pieces cut out and everything looks good. So now the moment of truth, I can lift this out and only one or two little spots it appears to have hung up. And here's a nice close up of all the intricate detail that we were able to produce on this project. While this project was running under the laser, I thought of a really neat way to add a splash of color to finish this puzzle off, and that would be to use some colored pencils to add a little bit of color in different areas. I think one of the really interesting things about this project is that I presented the Lightburn file to you in several layers, one of the layers being this outside border, one layer being just the puzzle pieces, and then the other layer being just the image. And this will allow you at home to get rid of the lion picture, if you wish, and substitute your own photo in its place, making this project very versatile and easily adaptable for your project needs. So did you like this video? Is there something else that you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments down below. I just really like having the opportunity to learn and create and share videos like this with all of you. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps this channel out, and it really helps connect content like this with viewers like you. As usual, until next time, learn, create, and share.